Hello everyone, Ember here, and welcome back to a new video. In this one, I'm excited to showcase a Iron Hands Future Box deck. Or is it just Future Box? Or is it Iron Hands Box? Is it Future Iron Hands Box? I don't know what the name of this deck is anymore. I used to like have a rough idea of the different Future decks, but they all seem a bit muddled and a bit confusing. And I'm assuming the traditional Future Box is the one that plays like all the stuff. So like Iron Treads, Single Prize, and like Iron Leaves, which Fair enough, like I think you could probably fit in Iron Leaves quite easily into this deck if you had a copy of it IRL. So yeah, you could definitely put Iron Leaves in here instead of this Dragon Type Maridon. But I just really like this card. I think it's a bit underrated and it doesn't see a lot of play. So yeah, I'm going to be trying this out in today's video. Also, I will be taking another look at this card in more detail in a future video. And I do have several partners in mind for it. So yeah, that will be quite fun. But anyway... On with the main meat of the video, which is, of course, the guy with the big hands himself, Iron Hands EX, which I'm sure needs no introduction at this point. And one of the reasons I just wanted to showcase this deck and give it a go is because, well, everyone else seems to be giving it a go, and I felt a bit left out. You know, like, usually I don't chase the meta. Usually um, I, like, try at least to steer away from it, but it is quite difficult, especially with this set when there's so many different things to, you know, experiment with. And there is a lot of, like, mid to decent stuff. Like, not bad to mid set, I would say, Temporal Forces. It's more like mid to decent is a general consensus for stuff. But yeah, this was definitely a deck that I really wanted to just give a go and revisit because this was a lot of fun with generators in Maridon. So, you know, figured it'd be worth trying out, right? So, Iron Press, 160. Still very, very good. But of course, now with Iron Crown, <laughs> this can get very scary very quickly. And then amp you very much, starting at 120. You can do 140 with the capsule, but the better use now is just to stack a bunch of iron crowns on the bench to do plus 20 damage. So fantastic. But how are we getting energy onto iron hands in the first place? Well, we have electricity generators, which are quite nice to accelerate some energy. I'm not playing any of the, uh, what's it called? Cypher Maniacs Deciphering or something. The uh, the new supporter will let you search your deck for two cards and put them on top of your deck. I'm not playing that supporter. I am, however, playing this Moridon. So I'm not playing the supporter. <laughs> that was very anticlimactic. But yeah, this Moridon, very, very strong card. Honestly, probably the best card in the deck, like low-key hands down, the best card in the deck. And the reason why I think that is for a single color synergy, Peak Acceleration does 40 base, which can be modified with the Capsule or the Iron Crown. And you can search your deck for up to two basic energy cards and attach them to your future Pokemon in any way you like. So a really fun use of this is to actually attach an energy to Maridon itself and then threaten a Sparking Strike. Because 160 is quite scary when you start to involve Iron Crown. So yeah, that can get scary quite quickly. And you can, if you really want to, use this Maridon. Although this Maridon is more like a niche mid to late game use i would say with repulsion bolt and potentially cyber drive although i've never used cyber drive in a game so far so yeah that's there as a nice option so before we talk about the list what do i think of this deck what are my impressions of this deck so far i guess with the games i've played with it i think it's good i think it's really good now unfortunately without a built-in draw engine <laughs> this deck does suffer from bricking and the game that i'm going to showcase with this deck profile I do brick in the first few turns, I think. Yeah, if it's the game I'm thinking of, the one I recorded, then yeah, I do brick in the first few turns. So I'm going to try and improve the list as time goes on with like more draw support and such. But truth be told, without a built-in draw engine or without, you know, like at least a Mew EX, then this deck is going to struggle a bit. Also, just the fact that everything is a bit brittle in a way, is that fair? You know, everything's a bit fragile. Then your opponent can like steamroll you either with like a very very good turbo to single prize deck which sounds really weird because you know ampy very much should be destroying them but against like a really strong single prize deck like maybe um oh what's it called the the name has gone from my head ancient box that's the one i'm thinking of you know like ancient box for example roaring moon can actually KO iron crown relatively easily because you're weak to dark so you know there's stuff like that which is kind of annoying for this deck and you know charizard is quite tanky anyway so if you don't care charmander as quickly then yeah things can go south for you pretty quickly but yeah it's a very fun deck it does have some issues with breaking i found but it does seem to be very fun it's a blast to play it's also very easy to play i would say that like the deck kind of just plays itself really especially after a certain point in the game it's kind of just painfully obvious what you're supposed to do in each scenario 
And like, I guess that's really frustrating for some players because, you know, they want more of a challenge a lot of the time. And maybe this deck has like a higher skill ceiling once you get past a certain level. But yeah, either way, it's definitely been very easy to play. Definitely a lot easier than most of the ancient decks, uh, with the exception of maybe just Roaring Moon EX on its own. So yeah, pretty easy deck to play. As for the list itself, I'm not going to spend too long on this because I already have, you know, the list in the description and, you know, you'll see it, and see it in action if you want to in the following gameplay. However, just a very quick overview. I'm honestly not sure I like Reboot Pod in this deck. I'm not sure. There's been times when I've figured out that Prime Capture would have been so much better than having this card, you know, just in the situations when I've had this in hand. And I've had, you know, thought about, oh, what if I had Prime Catcher in this situation instead? Or I could have Arvind for a Prime Catcher. You know, there's a lot of situations like that, which make me go, hmm, maybe the Ace spec that's actually meant for future decks exclusively because it's supposed to be so good might not actually be as good as Prime Catcher. I'm not sure yet. It's going to take some more testing. And, you know, if you want to lean into, like, big charms and stuff, you could, like, go for Hero's Cave, actually, and try and buff up your Pokemon even more. But... You know, I definitely think Reboot Pod is a good card, you know, it's still a great card and being able to place an energy on stuff like Iron Crown just to give it extra, well, utility really, just to be able to retreat it a bit easier is very nice, of course, and, you know, threaten some more attacks late game. But either way, I don't think Reboot Pod is necessarily the best A spec for the stack moving forward. Maybe, maybe it is, and I'm just talking a lot of trash, but, you know, just from my personal opinions and games, I've felt it's a bit underwhelming. Also got some heavy baton action in this deck. Not that hard to track down thanks to our three copies of Arvin. And we're also playing Poke Gear, so it's definitely not that difficult to find this. You could play Town Store because I'm not playing any stadium, but my logic behind not playing any stadiums anymore is there's no path to the peak. And as long as there's no path to the peak, I don't feel like I have to play stadiums. So you can play stadiums if you want, but I'm personally not going for them. But yeah, heavy baton, definitely nice for keeping some energy in play. Also playing an energy retrieval, which you don't always see. I'm only playing two different basic energy in this deck, Lightning and Psychic, so we can use other attackers. But yeah, energy retrieval is just quite nice for picking up two of those energy. Also, Earthen Vessel serves like a similar purpose, but in reverse. So just finding two different energy can be quite nice. But yeah, that's about it for the list. I don't think there's anything else really to talk about that hasn't already been talked about before. And then the energy split is four Psychic and a whopping 11 Lightning because you do have, you do have to hit those generators. But yeah, it's been Aaron Power. Hope you enjoyed this deck profile. Hope you enjoy the game or at least the list if you don't stick around for it. And yeah, thank you for watching. Okay, so this is going to be my very first game trying out the Iron Crown deck. And honestly, I've just kind of thrown a bunch of cards together, so I have no idea how this will go. But sadly, our hand currently is in the state of I don't know what to do about it. Now, it does look like we're playing against a bit of a rogue deck, which is a bit unfortunate that this happens to be my first game because I know that some YouTubers, like, well, not YouTubers, it's like some people just really don't like it when you showcase games versus decks that aren't, like, meta or competitive. But, you know, <laughs> you know, conveniently forgetting the fact that Quite a lot of players do who do play this game don't strictly play the top 10 best decks in the game, basically. You know, this game is made up of multiple different decks that see play, but I'm not sure what my opponent is playing, truth be told. It looks like we've got an Ekans, we've got an Overquill. I'm assuming that's going to be a Gengar EX eventually. My opponent has a two-card hand, but... Okay, so they do have the Arbok, that's fair enough. Do they have... Is okay. What's this guy doing? What does this guy do? Panic poison, right? Fair enough. So I'm now burned and poisoned, which is quite annoying. However, I do recover from the burn. Oh, wait, I don't recover from the burn. Never mind. I needed wait. No, that was just for poison. Oh, never mind. Okay. So at least we have Capsule. Now, I don't have anything currently, <laughs> but I shall just play a switching card and then just free retreat back into the other one, basically. So shall minus 30, and then I'll just retreat to the other one. And then hopefully, at some point on our 45 card deck, we shall find a draw supporter. Now, I do play several research in this deck. I also play several Arvin. I also play four copies of Colorus Experiment. 
And on top of that, I also play Poke Gear. So hopefully we at least find something. And they go for the Panic Poison again, even though they could have done 140 with Darkness Fang. Seems a bit strange, but oh well. Either way, that's uh, a wee bit unfortunate. So, yikes. Okay, we are dead drawing badly. And I shall go Lightning Energy. And just because I don't want to lose... Well... It doesn't make much of a difference, but it'll buy me one more term and one more turn in the grander scheme of things. So I will reluctantly do this, and we'll see what we draw. So hopefully this deck actually starts to draw again, or you know we might have to add some more draw supporters or face losing to goodness knows whatever this deck is. To be honest, I'm not sure why they're doing that when they could be doing 140 with a second attack, but we'll see. Tails, fair enough. So unfortunately, they are playing the Ghastly with 60 HP, so we can't actually KO Ghastly. Oh, thank goodness. Now, we do lose Reboot Pod, but... Okay, let's see if we can actually get back into this game, please. Please, please, that's... Okay, that's that's stuff. Yeah, I can do this. Right, Techno Radar. Discarding... Yeah, we don't need this Maridon, I don't think. We'll be, we'll be fine without it. We don't need it. Famous last words, but we'll be fine. Right, we'll go get a another Iron Crown... And a Maridon. And I'm pretty sure he's inflicted confusion. Have you burned, confused, and poisoned? All right, okay. So it's a little bit annoying that he will inflict those on this Maridon, but we'll see. And then I shall bench this as well. At least we have plenty of retreat options. Right, generator. Come on. Hit some energy. I need some energy, please. Get some energy on Iron Hands, and then I shall generate her again. Don't hit anything off generator, that's unfortunate. Uh, should I pile pad the last research in? I mean, you know what? <laughs> Given the fact that we don't seem to be drawing very well, I think that's probably worth it. And then I shall retreat to the bench. And unfortunately, I'm not really doing... A lot of damage here. What am I doing? 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Not quite enough to kill this Arbok here, but still. It's a start at the very least, right? It's a start. Then we'll get Lightning. Lightning Energy, I guess? Yeah, Lightning, Lightning. And I shall put them on this guy and this guy again. So hopefully, you know, we proceed to draw our way out of this one. We are in top deck mode once again, but we'll see. My opponent is also in top deck mode, <laughs> so vengeful punch. Okay, fair enough. And then they do the panic poison. So I think we kind of just go for it, really. Um, we are afflicted by confusion, but at the same time, we're possibly going to die to poison anyway. So yeah, 50, take another 20 off burn. So that's... Wow, okay. Decks deciding to be generous and draw for once, so cool. Research, thank you very much. Heavy Baton might want to escape his poison, so it might be wise, actually, to save the Baton. I'm almost tempted, almost tempted, he says, to just be greedy here, but no. No, I shall not be greedy. What I'm going to do is... Fork out for the retreat cost as much as it hurts me because I don't have any reboot pods. Is I'm just going to be aggressive because he's in top deck mode. He doesn't have a lot to work with. So I'm just going to retreat into Iron Hands. And that's assuming the game lets me. Please. Pretty please. 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 Oh, for goodness sake. I swear this game crashes. Please, don't crash. Thank you. I'm not sure if you can hear it, actually, but there is some serious wind outside, so I'm assuming that's the reason why there's a whole ton of, you know, static. I shall also, I shall also place one of these on the bench, because we will probably need another one, so... Then I shall go for the arm press and just kill this guy. So we do take 
four damage counters to the face, which is quite annoying. And I shall take a prize card. Thank you very much. Energy retrieval, that's nice actually. I do like energy retrieval. So we can get back a lightning and a psychic currently, which isn't super great at the end of the day, but you know, it's still better than nothing. My opponent will have an Iono, of course, though, which is eh, it's frustrating, but uh, you know, they probably can get back into the game themselves. So this should be pretty interesting. They are making use of the new Perilous Jungle, which is quite cool. So I quite like that. So they probably will aim to get Gengar EX online, which is, again, a bit scary, but they don't have it just yet. So we want to ideally attach as much, you know, energy as possible. So they kind of just did 130 out of nowhere, which is a bit scary. And honestly, I think what I'm going to do here is attach energy to this guy. Um, well, first I'll play, yeah, I'll play a switching cart into Iron Crown, just to heal a little bit of damage and remove the poison special condition. We shall switch, well, retreat into the Iron Hands. So we're currently doing enough to KO Hisuian over Quill here, but what I'm going to do actually is just boss this and remove this from play. So hopefully this slows them down to the point where we can just sweep with Ampy very much. And hopefully that's, you know, going to be enough to win this game, I guess. You know, we, uh, we're still a little bit behind in terms of setup. You know, they can still kind of claw their way back from this potentially, but either way, we'll see how it goes. Light Energy, Poke Gear. We are down, I believe, all our generators because I think we have to discard one. So one, two, three. Okay, there's one more on deck somewhere. So we do at the very least have one more. Jock for two evolutions. So Overquill Haunter question mark. Soon Overquill. And yeah, we kind of just need to amp you very much. And then I'm sure after that, we just don't need much more actually, to be fair. Um, I will put an energy down here. So I guess having the other Maraidon would have actually helped us, funnily enough, in the long run, but we'll see. Uh, what do I want to do? Poke Gear. And I don't need any tools, so I'll just get Chorus. Although, to be fair, I could have gotten, um, oh, what's it called? The, the very helpful item that would have, yeah, Generator, I could have gotten that, but yeah. So Iron Hands will unfortunately get KO'd, but I'm not too bothered about that. They still have to take another four prize cards. And we can more or less just promote the very helpful, well, very healthy, I should say, healthy copy of the Iron Crown. It's a bit of a shame that we had to discard Reboot Pod, but um, I don't think they can KO us, but I'll just promote this one just to be safe. And really, we might be taking the last prize card with this Maraidon, in theory. Just depends if our opponent has, like, Rare Candy Gengar, I guess. I owe no to one. Okay, that's quite annoying, actually. So my opponent is determined to fight to the last, sadly. We do get Chorus, though. We do get Chorus. So against all odds, we are still in this game, technically. So my opponent is whittling us down slowly but surely with a poison. So that's energy, that's nice. Then we can chorus. Okay, generator. I guess Arvin chorus is good. And we just need to energy off this actually, but we whiff it anyway, so never mind. <laughs> never mind, I guess. E well, whatever, I guess. Um, what do I want to do here? Uh, Maridon. Well, Maridon's like our best path to victory at this point, so I think we just remove poison 
go here. Although, truth be told, we can just peak acceleration, so I think we're fine, actually. Yeah, I think we're still fine. Peak acceleration, and then we can charge up energy to Iron Hands, so... Yeah, we should be fine. Very annoying deck my opponent is playing, but yeah. I think we still win this. Double Lightning Energy to the Iron Hands. Yeah. And then we should be fine. We should be fine. I guess we have to find energy to retreat, but either way, yeah. We should be fine. Nest Ball, what, what are they getting? Okay, no more nasty surprises, please. Yeah, I'm very surprised they didn't use the the Arbok to start doing like 140 to these guys because they're weak to dark, but you know, either way. And then we can just move on in there with a arm press for game. And yeah. So it got a bit scary there towards the end, but they didn't quite do enough damage. I think that's just like one of the main issues with the poison stuff right now is that it's not quite doing enough damage. And, you know, it was still scary. You know, even the amount of switch cards that I play in the deck and healing stuff, they still got me down pretty well. But, you know, either way, not too surprised we were able to bring that back. But, you know, still interesting stuff.